Memorable Stranger Stories According to Reddit Number 18 Gave a lift ride to a passenger and drove him deep into the desert almost exactly between Phoenix and Tucson. He didn't say a single word the entire ride, asked me to pull over on the highway, middle of nowhere, dead of night, very few cars passing, grabbed his bags and said, I think I want to try human flesh tonight. I zero to a hundred out of there and wonder what he did, why he wanted off at that exact point. There was nothing for miles, so many questions, but he creeped me out so much, exclamation point. Uh huh. Ridiculous. Number 17. Happy Thanksgiving. This Indian dude who worked in a convenience store just down the road from where I live. Oh man, am I going to get canceled because somebody feels that's offensive? Just like Apu is in The Simpsons? Yeah, I think that guy's an idiot. A little bit of, a little bit of Kyle flavor there. I'm not even joking, I really can't stand that that fuck. What a what a thin skinned loser. <laughs> you know what I mean? Would I have time to live my life if I was attacking everybody who uh who made jokes at black people's expense? I don't think I would. Moving on, I went there with my cousin one time just to pick up some snacks and alcohol, as if to say, you know, I would never go in there normally. So we ask him what we should buy. And he picks up this bottle of super strong stuff. My cousin says, oh my God, I'm not trying to die. And he responds with, it's good when you die, you know? His Indian accent made it sound pretty funny. <laughs> Racist. I was low-key creeped out at first until he started talking about how he had a near-death experience on LSD. Nice. You gotta pierce the veil, boys. Psychedelics. The Kyle Channel does not condone the use of psychedelics, at least without a partner. Fucking cool, bro. Sorry. And how he takes all kinds of psychedelics, sometimes even when he's on shift. Man, you really play a hardball, boy. For some reason, I felt really sad for him, even though he seemed like a super happy guy. Why, why does he need your pity? Some people are so up their own ass as wild. <laughs> <laughs> like, who asked you? I sometimes wonder where he is now and how he's doing. This really is a list of just, like, <laughs> memorable strangers, huh? What are, you, what are you signing up for? If you're watching this on Thanksgiving, psh, I don't know what to tell you. I hope that this grants you the escape from the, from the, the sick vultures that have somehow managed to survive another year in your family and extended friend group. Oh, you know what I mean? You want a good shudder? Here's a good take. <laughs> so my sister and I were in middle school at the time, eating mall food with our mom. Mom decides to get a couple of things from the food mart real quick as we're eating, goes to do so. So we're in view of the window so that she could look over and still see us. Everything's fine. Sister and I notice an old couple at another restaurant. They looked like they were mad dogging us while we were eating. So, you know, as a black man who considers himself well versed in vernacular, uh, in and out of my own culture, contextually, I can tell you that mad dogging probably means like they were giving them the evil eye, the stink eye, they were mean mugging, they were glaring, you know? Contextually, I want to believe that that's what that is, but I have never seen this term used before. You know, I, I'm just shocked that there are so many different shades of white for people to employ um, as they speak to one another. So, yeah, I'm just, just reading it as it is. They looked like they were mad dogging us while we were eating. Ridiculous. It made me uncomfortable, but I tried ignoring them. You know, my mom popped back out for a moment to check on us. And now the old couple started to throw their food away and head out. Get a load of these people. My mom then headed back in to finish shopping. And the wife patted her husband's shoulder, pointed back at me and my sister, and they both sat back down and continued to watch us. What do you think? They're going to kidnap you? 
think that these old people are scoping you out for their for their government parties their sick government parties they finally left when they saw that our mom was at the checkout and my sister and i simultaneously went oh they were watching over us the whole time i doubt it thanks wherever you guys are not enough people are like you two some people just create an entire fucking story in their head for people who don't watch my lists on a daily basis you should <laughs> So if you're confused about when these lists occur, follow me on Twitter because I'm going to start tweeting when the lists go out, but join the Discord, the link of which is in the description, and you'll get notifications because I'll send them out to everybody when I do these streams. This is a premiere though, so if you donate, you know, I'll probably get it in the middle of a meal and then get extremely anxious because I'd like to thank people immediately. But if you have, you know, via Venmo or Super Chat or something like that, I appreciate you. I love you. You're amazing. Way to flex, by the way. But if you want to be notified for these streams, go ahead and join that Discord. Go ahead and join that Discord. The reason that I was bringing up another list is because uh, there was a story about a woman who had moved into a house and she found some bones and she assumed that maybe a doctor had lived there before him or her and, uh, you know, was performing abortions and burying the bones of, you know, the children in the yard. And then when, you know, after years and years and years, she finally decided to call the police. They came and found that it was like fake bones. It's like, you know, it was fake. So she had just created this whole narrative in her head. And I hope it, you know, uh, impresses upon you the idea that you shouldn't put too much into some things especially when it's conjecture and you have no proof for it you know boy <laughs> number 15 a girl named rose she was a super shy seven-year-old girl with cancer i got to hang out with her at an outdoor camp for one of those days um and we were both there after a couple of hours she began to open up to me she never let loose like a child would, but stayed very reserved and told me about the things that she could still enjoy doing. At seven years old, she had read every Harry Potter book, and for the rest of the day, I listened to her talk about nothing but Harry Potter. I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, but it was one of the best days of my life. Sometimes, knowing that you can be there for somebody is enough, you know, even if they wouldn't even return the favor. Got pretty dark, didn't it? Got pretty sad, didn't it? It's not even about being the bigger person either. Sometimes you just need to know that in your small way, even if you die right now and you're forgettable, you're not, your name's not up in lights and there's no statues or people singing your songs or reading your books, that you took the time out of your day to try to make somebody else's day a little more special, even if it was just to listen. Mm. You're just hoping you're listening to me right now. And not because I need you to listen to me. But because I like you. Sorry. I'm, it's true. But but because um but because uh if you're using this as a distraction, this is exactly what I have it here for. Be distracted on the list of memorable stranger stories. Am I a memorable stranger for you? We could be more. We could be more. Why you gotta do that? Why you gotta have that voice? What's up with that? Hmm? This is an intervention, Kyle. Why don't you have a C? Number 14. The one sixth grader when I was in eighth grade, he asked me if I was his dad. I'm female. And I said yes. And the kids with him started cheering. <laughs> Upvote. Upvote. <laughs> Listen, there is a flavor of ridiculous that this post has struck. We've struck absurd gold with this one. I'm not going to taint it with any more commentary. We're going to keep moving on. This is a post by Toaster Official. Okay? Number 13. I was in a bad car wreck in Boston. I crawled out the other side of the car and had a panic attack on the side of a busy road. A crowd of people came over to me, but this one woman stroked my hair and gave me her drink until I calmed down. It sounds weird, 
but it was exactly what I needed at that moment. Bitch, you lucky that you survived because this person was kind enough to sit with somebody that may or may not have made it following an automobile accident. Do you get what I'm saying? Physically, guys, we are all going to die alone. But to literally not have to, have to do that, you know, to have someone, anyone there with you during the moment of a fear and, and realization and, and grief and, and joy and, and hatred and everything that will be firing in your brain as it releases all of them chemicals because you are going out, boy, that brain's going to start firing. It's going to start freaking out, boy. That's a nice lady. That's a nice lady. I wish I knew ladies like that. Number 12. I was really drunk, trying to find my way back to a friend's new house after we got separated walking back from the bar. I was in a dress and heels with no coat in the middle of a Canadian winter. A guy randomly walking and... A guy was randomly walking and noticed how drunk I was and offered to help me find my friends. He stayed with me all night, walking at first, and then driving in his car until I sobered up, trying to help me find my friends. Bitch, you brave getting to some. <gasps> is this is this story making me perpetually drunk? I'm out here hiccuping. You better not do it again, Kyle. He stayed with me all night, walking at first, and then driving in his car until I sobered up. Yawns and hiccups, it's all here, gang. You got any sneezes in you, Kyle? Just get it all out, you know. Farts, you know. You know, what What other bodily noises we got? Leave a comment in the comment section below. What's your favorite bodily noise? Do your bones creak? So look, this, this lady got into a car with this dude. I didn't have my cell phone on me and I didn't have any money. It could have turned out a lot worse. He gave me a pair of pants and the jacket and when I finally sobered up at around 8 a.m., I realized that my friend's house was on the street behind his house. Thank you, kind stranger, for staying with me and making sure that nothing happened to me. You didn't even give him a kiss on the cheek? Jeez. You didn't keep in touch either? That's a guardian angel that you found, a unicorn of a man. This isn't the utopia that you, you ladies like to believe that, you know, it is. This dude probably saved you from much, much worse that night. Oh my god. Yet the ladies out here ruining the lives of people that's like... <laughs> not even doing nothing oh my god did y'all hear about this one bitch on twitter who was like i am a victim of domestic abuse and it's like okay what does that have to do with um you know she was like she's on supergirl and like look you've been through some stuff i'm sorry that it happened to you but at the same time bro um isn't the timing a little weird isn't the timing a little weird? Because to me, it was like, it was literally like <laughs> Thanksgiving Day. We're all sitting down, about to have our meal. Everybody's around us. And then one of you just blurts out, I was abused. <laughs> and you're like, calm down there. Okay. All right there's evidence of this then you know it needs to have come out and uh, the necessary legal action needs to have been taken i don't know why you're telling everybody online are you about to are you about to start a witch hunt here is this a me too thing about to happen what oh my god the timing of it all i don't know guys number 11 great question it triggered a memory that i haven't thought of in years when i was 18 i moved to london didn't know anyone and used to spend my free time wandering around the city one night i was probably out too late and in the wrong part of town i got beaten up pretty bad and ended up in the hospital the next day a man arrived with my wallet that was taken during the beating 
He must have stayed taking, well, that's what he wrote, but he means talking. He must have stayed talking to me for two hours, just generally chatting and asking me how I ended up like this. He asked me about my family, my home place, etc. It was the most company that I had had since I moved there and it was a time I really needed or at a time I really needed some human contact and I think he knew that. I did thank him but he probably didn't realize just how much I needed him there that day. Jesus. Sucks you got jumped. Watch where the hell you walking. Get yourself some protection. You know, and stay near some populated areas. Let's be real. Being in a populated area isn't going to save you from an assault. Especially if it's by a group. You know, because people will just stand by. That's what bystanders do. But at least maybe some of their faces will get caught on a recording device. And maybe there'll be justice? Number 10. My credit card got declined at a subway. I was trying to eat fresh. The lady behind me paid for my sandwich. She wall. I thanked her for profusely. And then she sat down and almost cried. This was months. No, and then I sat down and almost cried, bitch. Sorry, my brain. I'm just thinking about me getting a free sandwich. Wow, free sandwich. Wow. This was months and months ago, but I'll always be grateful for her kindness. I could never let somebody pay for my shit somewhere, you know, as a stranger. I don't know, man, because I would just feel terrible. If I went somewhere and my card just didn't work, I would be not. I could not let somebody else pay for it. You know, I don't know. I'd feel like one of those guys putting on some drama to try to get somebody to pay for it, you know. All I'd need is a dog and a baby. And then to wail, oh, am I going to feed this baby? My car got declined. Number nine. Okay. I was waiting at a subway station. Ooh, a different type of subway. He was trying to ride fresh. Is that funny? Huh? Sit down. This is an intervention. I thought I told you about making them non-funny jokes. Interrupting the flow of my otherwise impeccable thick, throbbing, girthy list. People people losing their mind at this list, taking off their clothes at this list. About to sculpt sculpt something out of a solid block of, of ivory out of this list. Where'd they get the ivory? Don't worry about it. Sure as hell better I not been melting down elephant tusks into a block of ivory to then chisel chisel from the from the ivory. A beautiful piece. But only with the inspiration of the Kyle list. In their mind they dance naked, the music flowing, the water at their ankles, not splashing, but flowing. As though in a stream. They frolic through the Medero. <laughs> Wait, sorry, back to reality. Number nine is written by somebody named I Got Big Balls. I was waiting at the subway station when I hear a man approaching, bobbing his body as he sang, Watch me do me. Watch me do me. Now I'm me do, okay? After exchanging pleasantries, he looks to the gloves that I was wearing. He proceeds to take one off of my hand and say, Ooh, wow, those are nice gloves. Are those suede? He takes the glove to his face, takes a deep sniffing inhale, and gives it back saying, yeah, that's suede. Nice, nice. He then looks over my shoulder toward the station security guard, takes a small step to the right so that I'd block him from view, pulls out a bottle of vodka from his pocket with the biggest grin on his face and takes a huge pull and again bops off into the night singing, watch me do me, watch me do me. 10 out of 10 would watch him do him again. But what an adventure.
We're going to have to hear this food making noise. Oh, no. Give me a second here. Mm. As we continue up the list, we arrive at number eight. A few years ago, I was waiting to buy a drink at a concert, and this Russian guy next to me said something to me. I responded. He instantly realized that I was American and suddenly starts yelling, You're American! You're going to fuck my daughter! I calmly reassured him that, no, I was not, in fact, trying to fuck his daughter. He seemed satisfied with that and then handed me a shot of really bad vodka and disappeared. I think about that guy a lot. I also feel bad for whoever eventually fucks his daughter. Mm -mm. The unfuckables. Number seven. The girl on my running route who asked if she could run with me sometime and I said sure and didn't give her my number or get hers. Holy Yo, this is another kind of um, list, and I don't even want to think about it. Like, missed opportunities with men because we were too dim-witted or stupid to properly navigate a scenario where a girl was interested. These are the worst things in the world because you look back and you realize that you could have fucked them. If you wanted to, you could have fucked them. Is that what you wanted? It must not have been what you wanted because your stupid brain didn't allow you didn't allow you even though oh my god i'm getting i'm getting calls give me a second give me a second thanksgiving coming in like a like a hot turkey I apologize for that short gap. I'm here. Did it seem as though it was an eternity? Did you miss me? Prove that you missed me. Write about it in the in the comment section below. And if that can't contain you, then get to the Discord. And if that can't contain you, Snapchat it. And if that can't contain you, tweet it. And if that can't contain it, then I want you to go outside in the middle of the night and look up towards the moon and speak and hope that I am looking at that same moon and can hear you and can bond with you. Together, we can live free, free of the shackles of people who make their username Mind Feces and then write things on Reddit. Bing bong. Number six, I was waiting for my mom to finish the paperwork to adopt my first dog when I was four years old. I looked at a random lady in the waiting area and I told her that I was going to have a puppy and pointed at the dog. She said, what will you name her? I told her I didn't know. She said, well, she's very fluffy. <laughs> uh, a muffin is fluffy. Why don't you name her Muffin? I smiled at her and walked away to tell my mom. I had my dog Muffin until I was 17 years old and I'll never forget the nice lady who gave me her name. That is so wholesome. I certainly hope we're not having muffins today. No damn meal. I ain't touching them damn muffins. I've told y'all before, muffins are the weirder version of a cupcake for a fat boy like Kyle. Give me the icing. Give me the icing. It's a cake in a cup. It's a bite-sized cake with some icing on it. Oh god damn. Number five, one time I went to the gum wall in Seattle. My friend put his chewed gum on the wall 
and this guy came up behind me, plucked it off the wall, and started chewing it. He told my friend, any gum you put on the wall is mine. He didn't even look like a crazy homeless guy. He was just well-groomed, and he was wearing a suit. I have never been more unnerved in my life. And I was just an onlooker. Any gum you put on the wall is his. He was wearing a suit. Oh my god. I guess that's just how it is. In Seattle. Don't let trying to compete with Florida go to your heads, boys. Ain't nobody doing crazy like us. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to charge this phone the hell up and then head the hell out to a Wizzle Walmart, see if I can capture anything giggity gangster out there. I do what I do for you, stream. I do what I do for you. Mm. So when you're watching this, can you do me a favor and send me, uh, send me like deals? Cause I'm, tr I'm really trying to get a Nintendo Switch, but it doesn't seem to go any lower than 260 and that's for refurbished at uh, GameStop and I don't really mind that that bad because it's really just going to turn into an Animal Crossing machine but it's crazy because I've seen a hundred dollar Xboxes today I've seen a hundred and fifty dollar um, PS4s today but all the switches are three hundred dollars unless you buy that stupid ass switch Lite, which is basically just a, a handheld device you can't hook that up to a TV so you ain't gonna be streaming with it. <gasps> Number four was deleted, so I'm scrolling down to get that, and here we are, and I apologize. Boy, this entry seems long. So I'm Canadian, right? I was 17 years old, more than half my life ago now. Pertinent information. I got a six-month working holiday maker's visa and moved to the forest of Dean on the Welsh border halfway between Cardiff and Gloucester. Jesus. My mother had a childhood friend who lived there, and she said that she could get me a job as a shepherd for the summer. Straight out of a storybook. Y'all live some, some ridiculously hilarious lives. Not that there's anything wrong with this. It's just like... It's like a TV show. <laughs> but that fell through. I ended up working as a laborer in a factory that crushed rock into powder for obscure and exotic purposes and in an industrial park outside of Cardiff. Did it give you strong looking hands, you know, not like you're actually strong and buff, but like maybe your hands got really veiny. Some girls are into that kind of crap. I will never forget the rural bus driver who picked me up and dropped me off going to and from work, even though I've long since forgotten his name. It was the same bloke both ways, which means that he must have been working a 12 hour day. Although I imagine maybe he got a few hours off in the middle of his shift when everyone who had to get to work was there. No one was heading home yet. This was not a bus for tourists. It hit all the small towns once in the morning and was uh, once again in the night to shuttle people to mines and factories and mills. When you got a job, you called the bus company to let them know that you needed a ride. He freely admitted that he knew everyone on this route well enough to know when he could pull over and take a catnap. He made models out of matchsticks. He was always rubbing down matchsticks with sandpaper to make little bits and pieces for ships or trains or bridges or houses or furniture. He showed me pictures of his finished work and it was quite impressive. Some of it sold, some he donated to museums. My work was dirty. When your end product is dust, you end up black like a coal miner. This guy found an army surplus greatcoat somewhere, and he used it to wrap me in it when I boarded the bus at the end of my shift so I wouldn't dirty his upholstery. Sometimes I fell asleep against the window and would smudge the glass with the dust in my hair. He started keeping a bottle of Windex under the seat just to clean up after me. My favorite memory of him was him yelling at the sheep that would stand in the middle of the old country roads and he'd start by honking, then yelling, then revving the engine. Then finally he'd get out of the bus and ask the sheep very nicely to move. If they didn't move, he'd come back on the bus and say, right lads, we're here for a bit. Take a nap if you like. I'm gonna fiddle with my matchsticks. I have a picture of him somewhere, white collared shirt, short sleeve shirt with a dark tie. He was middle-aged, 
round round without being fat, bald without it being his defining feature, and he had a smile that told the world he had it all figured out. I found out his I found his comfortable niche and wanted no more from life. He had no strife or troubles. He took people to work, took them home, and in between he napped. He did a bit of model making with matchsticks and yelled at the sheep. To me, he was the very soul of rural England. But as there's a 50-50 shot he was Welsh, I don't know if he'd like me saying so. This is frightfully well written. So I don't believe it. <laughs> Sorry. It's called, uh, I don't know. I, w I would, I would, I would, I would consider it the, the capacity to discern. This is all frightfully well articulated as an anecdote. Um, it seems practiced. You know, some people have a knack for good writing. This is too well written. If this all happened to you, you wouldn't be able to dictate the account of it this flawlessly. There's charm, there's grace, and there's... What I would say deliberate wording that rope you into the wholesomeness of this story, you know? You don't know this whole nigga's life. How are you going to tell him that he had no strife and troubles, you know? Could be people in his life dying and, you know, he just does all this shit to take his mind off it. The matchsticks could be close to an obsession, you know? No, no different from alcohol in some people's lives. But, you know, from your perspective, you know, we accept it. We agree. But even down to the ending... He was the very soul of England, but since there was a 50-50 shot, he may have been Welsh. Um, I doubt he'd like me saying so. What a wonderful end. I don't believe it. I get a load of this guy. Yeah, it's, all, it's also written in a really solid and charming way. Someone says, so why was it removed? Good question. Good question. Hmm. The dude linked his Twitter account, and then all of this got removed. You know? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Maybe they removed him the way that they removed me um, whenever I post any links to any outside bullshit. Because he was saying, oh, you can go follow me on Twitter. God forbid, right? God forbid we read something and go, well, that was well written. Is this a writer? And then ask the dude, hey, are you a writer? Everybody gives the thing medals too. Jesus Christ, Reddit. Just tone it down, my dude. It's not like everybody's trying to use your shit as a billboard, but if people literally want more of you, give them the opportunity to get more. Reddit. Ooh, it's a dictatorship. Number three, when I was a kid, there was a man who would hang out at the side of the playground. Not because he was being a creep, but because he was really far into special needs and he essentially had the mind of a child. He would stand there as the kids were running by and blurt out, Hi, I'm Larry. He did this for all of five years of grade school. I think about him often, to be honest. He was so happy, yet all he wanted was to play with us when we would play kickball or whatever it is that we were allowed to step onto the playground for. Larry was 30 years old. Jeez. Damn. Unfortunate. That's life. Number two. My sophomore year in college, I would always see this older man on my walk to my math class. He was always going out of his way to say good morning and ask how I was doing. 
We never exchange names, just two people checking in on each other. I mean, that seems nice and above board. You know, I'm super suspicious and hesitant of everybody. You know? If only we had like a secret handshake to know that people are trustworthy. It'd be a secret boob shake for me. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Wait a minute. Something about that boob jiggle wasn't right. Who are you? Number one on this list. Overweight guy was ordering in front of me at Subway. Literally mid-sentence, he stops muttering to himself and says, What am I doing? And walks out. <laughs> Somebody says, edit. No, I mean, the same dude says, edit. Also, Subway is gross. If you eat it, you will get hairy man boobs. Leaking. And, and PP cancer. Also, Subway hates minorities. Is that true? Google -ay. Hate on the train? No, this is like talking about a real subway, not the subway food place. Ridiculous. There, now you know it's not a corporate post. Oh, because people were accusing him of saying that, you know, <laughs> he was shilling subway. That was confusing to me because he was like giving subway all this crap, but he was just saying that you were there. Who were you there for? Some girl? Some girl wanted you to go to Subway and you were like, man, whatever for them titters. <sighs> I hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving. You have a breath of fresh air. Things make sense for you this day. And that um, you'll, you'll see more of me on the tail end of all of this uh, bing bong today. Mm. Take it easy. I'm sorry that this couldn't be way longer. I was trying to get something lengthy but even so this is still only 36 minutes ain't that wild it is what it is see you guys soon love ya links are in the description Bull. thank you to all my patrons where is that splash image I'd program a bot to listen to me if it were safe but you know that it's not nah. thank you patrons and a special thanks to all of my sponsors and I'm going to update, update these today when I get back home because they may not reflect all of the people who are. And I love you and I appreciate you and you need to be bing bonged there. Give you that representation. Love you. See you soon. Stay out of trouble and have a great day. Bye.